everyone. I am Serena Fazan, and welcome to Unlocking Tampa Bay. I'm joined with President and CEO of Visit Tampa Bay, Santiago Carrada. Santiago, what a way to kick off 2023. <laughs> what a way to end 2022 <laughs> and kick off 2023. Yes, number one in Forbes magazine. Let's start with that. Yeah, well, you know, we've been number one in a lot of things for a few years, and to be named number one uh place to live in Florida by Forbes is really a testament to what has happened. I think, you know, a lot of private investment has led to that ranking. I think the marketing uh, and the PR that we've done around the growth in Tampa, all the great new things that we have in Tampa, I think has made a difference. And quite honestly, a few years ago, when we were ranked by Forbes or, or some other great uh, organization, they attributed our success to private investment as well as marketing. And so I think the two go hand in, hand in glove. And I think as well, you know, good government, strong government, and just, you know, a great place to live that speaks for itself. And so many things happen to lead to this, as you just mentioned. Yeah. Talk about one of them being the Tampa edition. Well, we, yeah. I mean, you know, we just opened our first five-star hotel, Tampa edition. I believe there are only 14 in the world and four or five here in the U.S. And it's just this incredible place uh, that makes you feel like you're extraordinary. I've had some opportunities to to dine there and visit. And it's just another feather in the cap, you know, another coin in the treasure chest since we're, <laughs> we're talking Gasparilla season uh, that makes us very, very unique, especially when you think about just how few of them there are in the world and that we now have one right here at home. So it's fabulous. Now we can, we can say we have a five-star hotel and it truly is a five-star hotel. And of course, for this episode, we're gonna talk a lot about Gasparilla, the third largest parade in the country, but staying with the addition for just a moment. Sure. And being a five-star hotel, as you said, our first, that, I mean, that speaks volumes for other major hotels coming yeah, here. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, we, we needed to make sure we had the first, and this is the first. You know, we've had a lot of firsts uh, over the last year. So, you know, we were talking about the beginning of 2023, but the end of 2022 was spectacular. You know, Virgin Atlantic, uh, direct flights to Heathrow, Sir Richard Branson in town, uh, you know, doing the inaugural flight, the addition, the Michelin Guide, adding, you know, 19 of our restaurants to the guide in, in some category. Those are global global recognitions, right? Those are those are big time recognitions for the destination. And again, being able to to put on a resume a five star hotel when you're trying to bring in major class events. You know, when we're out there and we're competing for a Super Bowl or a Shriners convention or, you know, a Republican National Convention or some entertainment show, whatever the case might be, you know, they want to know whether you have a five-star hotel. And now we do. And hopefully that'll be the seed uh, that continues to grow for us and we get additional properties that we don't have right now here in the inventory. You know, in starting 2023, it was starting on a very strong foot because many records broken in 2022. Yeah, you know, what's phenomenal is that we have had now 20 consecutive record-setting hotel revenue months. 20. 20 consecutive. That's amazing. Uh, and the first few months of uh, the year look extremely promising. We have an incredible summer on tap. We know we have more major conventions booked in summer, this summer than at any other time. So, you know, we're expecting some great things from 2023. Again, just a lot of exposure through sports, lots of exposure through marketing, lots of exposure through big groups and conventions and events that are happening this new year. Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. So we have sports teams, we have five-star hotels, we have Mitchell Little Awards. Right. And also, I mean, you know, of course, Tampa. You know, we're proud of Tampa. Tell yeah. us about your special trip, though, that you made to maybe another little city called yeah, Tampa. you know, you know, that was, uh, you know, that was a brilliant, brilliant opportunity for us during a time of giving uh, to give something wonderful, to give a wonderful memory to another city, another town that bears our name. And so, you know, all kudos goes to our PR and marketing team because uh, they stumbled upon uh, and I say that uh, in an interesting <laughs> way, they stumbled upon uh, Tampa, Kansas, and really did their homework and their research as to how many people live there. Uh, would we be able, through our partners, uh, to accommodate and host the entire uh, town of Tampa, Kansas, here in Tampa, Florida, and develop you know, incredible relationships that I think will last a lifetime. Uh, and, and not only that, but it really uh, markets 
Tampa, Florida, in Kansas. And when you when you do a goodwill gesture like that to another city in another state, uh, a certain level of respect and and you know friendship grows from that. And I think that's what you'll see. And you know we we love marketing everywhere. Uh, and Kansas was a place that we thought, you know what, if we can do something great for the people of Tampa, Kansas, uh, we think Kansas will remember us. And we think Tampa, Kansas will be forever, forever our, our, our sister city there. And of course, now, I mean, what better time with Gasparilla? We're talking about Gasparilla right. on this episode. Again, a lot of people, I mean, third largest parade in the country. Yeah. And when you think about what that's developed into, because the parade obviously is a part of, of legend here. It's been around for, what, over 100 years. It's been celebrated, you know, every single year, for, except for a couple of years, right, in that, in that time span. But the fact that it's grown and you've added a children's parade and there's a night parade and there's a run and a film festival and a music festival and an art festival, you know, it's really turned into, you know, an entire season for us to be able to promote. And people in other parts of the country where the weather might not be that great would be looking at something very unique to be involved in that uh, is a tradition, that is something very, very specific to another place. And so it's a great opportunity for us to show off, you know, our, our great city, our great destination, and the people, because we know that uh, the individuals that make up the crews that are involved in putting on these parades are, you know, great individuals in our community. And so what better way than to share, uh, you know, a little bit of home with people who might be interested from either throughout Florida, throughout the United States, uh, to come here and celebrate that season with us. And again, you know, so many different weekends of activities for all tastes, right? There's also a run and there's a, mar you know, a marathon. So there's some really great things to be engaged with with Gasparilla. You know, and, and on this episode, there's so many people, as you know, we could talk to. We chose to talk to a pirate. From yeah. your personal perspective, why do you think that's so special to talk not only to a pirate, but to one of the pirates from the Ye Mystic crew of Gasparilla? Well, you know, they're such giving individuals, you know, year round. Uh, you know, we celebrate the season with them. But they're involved in our community day in and day out. And the crew, you missed a crew of Gasparilla, so involved with us when we're out on the road and we're trying to bring a convention to town or we're trying to bring a big event to town or when we welcome Tampa, Kansas to town. You know, they were engaged with us. So they're phenomenal community uh, heroes. They're great, great partners for us. And so the fact that we can highlight uh, the season and talk to one of the men of uh, one of the crews, and there are many, and we we have women and we have men that are engaged here in crews is really uh, us really giving back as well because we are partners and they they they're there for us and we're there for them so uh, it's great to be able to highlight them and and this season and it goes without saying Santiago there are a lot of people involved bringing Gasparilla together oh my god when you think of the crews and the event planners and you think about the city and the county and the additional law enforcement that comes in to make sure that we have you know a great time and that it's safe you talk about what happens on the water Water during Gasparilla. I mean, there are a lot of people that come together. And I, I've got to tell you, if you've never seen it, I, I will never forget my first one because it's so dramatic to see the amount of people uh, that dress up and have a great time. And then, you know, it's an event that is enjoyed on the land side and on the water side. So to see the boats and to see the boats dressed up, you know, people decorate those boats and to see people on the boats, deck, you know, all decked out. And then you see the people on the, it's just stunning to see uh, how many people participate in the parade. And, you know, we use it as a selling tool. You know, we make sure that we bring in meeting planners and and journalists and trade people, uh, you know, conventioneers that are about ready to sign a contract with us. And we make that a very uh, uh, important opportunity to learn about the destination. So we make sure we take them to hotels. We show them the convention center. We take them out to the parade route. Uh, we show them that we can put on a big event like that, uh, third largest, as you mentioned, parade in the country. Country and that we do it flawlessly. So uh, we're able to not just have a great time with them, but we're also able to educate them on how well we can we can have big, big events here. And do you travel all over as you bring these people to see Gasparilla and what it offers? Yeah, no, no. Our team is engaged with them over that whole weekend. So they come in before the event and we take them out to see special venues. We take them out to the hotels. We take them. Yeah, we do a 
familiarization visit during that Gasparilla weekend. And sometimes we even keep them after to do some additional things. If something might be, there've been years when something was happening in Orlando and we were able to capture some of that audience and bring it over to Tampa and again, educate them on the destination, you know, in a very, very fun, uh, fun and entertaining way. So yeah, it's absolutely a work weekend for us. You know, we're taking it in, uh, but we're also making sure that we can drive future business here because we can host an event like that. And you know, you have been in Tampa now for what? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. How have you, have, it's grown so much. You know, there's so much more to show. You know, I was uh, looking at a, one of our marketing videos just this weekend. I, I was speaking to a group and 10 years ago, that video would have looked very differently. You know, 20 years ago, it would have been starkly different. And so it's amazing to see this evolution and all the things we can talk about. Just as in this episode, we talked about the Michelin Guide and Virgin Atlantic, and we talked about the addition. You know, last year we we're talking about the JW Marriott. You know, we can talk for days on what's happening at the airport and at the port and with development downtown. You know, this is an incredibly dynamic place uh, that always looks to be better. And so that's a great story for us to always share uh, when we have newcomers to the destination. And Gasparilla provides a great opportunity that whole season for us to uh, expose this destination to people who might never have seen it. And honestly, certainly worthy once again to mention that being the number one city to live. Yeah, you know, again, uh, that is another uh, headliner in the resume. And, you know, we've had so many over the last few years. And it just uh, is a testament to the incredibly hard work that happens here every single day. Well, Santiago, as always, it's such a pleasure to sit here and talk to you. And you. are you ready to hear more from our <laughs> special pirate? I uh, sure am, because they are very colorful. <laughs> And of course, Gasparilla could not be Gasparilla without the Pirates. And what an honor to have Frank Smith joining us, Thank part you. of Ye Mystic Crew of Gasparilla. Yes. 50 years plus, Frank. 54. 54. Oh my gosh. Okay. So clearly you love Gasparilla. Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, it's like a continuation of the holidays. You get Thanksgiving, you get Christmas. But what I look forward to more is Gasparilla. Gasparilla is... And it doesn't just stop then. It's not just the one day. There's I mean, there's a so lot many of Gasparilla related things, but yeah, it's something that I look forward to every year. And you know, when you start as a kid, I mean, growing up, I can't remember the earliest time I went to Gasparilla. I, I had to be a toddler. You had to be, well, 54 years ago, right? Well, how about, <laughs> how about maybe 64 years ago as, as a young child? Uh, Gasparilla you know, is a Tampa tradition. And with a strong family connection to it, I, I, I can't remember how young I was when I first went to Gasparilla. You just knew that this was something that was in your destiny. And now you've, get, you've gotten to share that destiny with hundreds of thousands of people who attend Gasparilla every year. And it's really what makes you so proud of Tampa, so proud of this community. Uh, and seeing everybody who comes out for it, not only in the parade, but everything leading up to the parade, uh, everything on the water. If it's a nice day on the water, yes, there are the, the larger boats in the, in the official flotilla, but you can have 500 plus pleasure boats of all sizes, jet skis, outboards, sailboats, uh, and then seeing everybody lined up on the channel all the way from Davis Island, all the way to the convention center, just as thick as they can possibly be. So let me ask you, this started what, in 1904, correct? Right. And so how have you seen it changed? And just to see Tampa today, amazing. Number one city in Forbes magazine. I mean, you know, we're making, we're making a national impact, international impact. Gasparilla has gotten a whole heck of a lot larger, bigger. It's changed a lot. The makeup of the parade itself has changed a lot. The direction of the parade has changed a lot as Tampa has grown. The spectators. Now what are we looking at? Maybe a half a million people or more? Mm -hmm. I guarantee you 54 years ago, I can think of maybe two or three rows of chairs 
along the bay shore and but now, now but now <laughs> i mean it's just so thick with with people the whole parade route so what does that feel like like what does that feel like you know like when you're on the boat and then when you're going down in the parade just describe to us you feel like a rock star <laughs> i mean it's it's really it's your day i mean where else can you Invade a city with cannons, with gunfire, and then have a parade where everybody wants treasure. It is just an incredible experience. So speaking of treasures, you brought the coins that you originally threw, right? right. These yes. were, and then it has, you know, now you have, we have the beautiful beads. So right. talk to us about the coins and then the change to beads. These were, they're actually made of plastic. They're made to look like a, a golden doubloon. You've got a, a pirate's head on the one side, and you've got the ship on the other. And it, it basically, you've got this gas for a pirate festival. And then on the back, it says Tampa for a golden future. And look at our future now. So then we went into beads. Yeah, the beads, now they didn't come about until about 1986. Uh, by then, you had an awful lot more crews. You know, we started, obviously, Jack Gasparilla was the only crew in 1904, and we didn't actually have a second crew until, until you, 1966. Wow, so it took a time. 1966, it took a while. the second crew, that would have been the uh, crew of Venus. And then several years later, in 73, you had the crew of Santiago. So as Tampa is getting bigger and more diverse, so are the number of crews. Today, there are 77 crews, and all of them participate in some form during the Gasparilla Parade of Pirates. That's amazing. Now, how many beads do you guys think you throw out? I mean, <laughs> as many as you can carry. <laughs> and what's interesting about the beads. There are several resupply points along the parade. So you don't have to carry the whole load, if you will, for the whole parade. Uh, there is a resupply at the beginning of the parade, before the parade actually begins. There's another resupply at about uh, Rome Avenue. There's a resupply before you go downtown. So there are plenty of opportunities to get what everybody seems to want these days are the beads because you know you've got to think about it right so the parade starts and i'm so glad to hear about these restops because what about the people that end up at the end of the parade so that's so good to know that the pirates are stopping to get more beads for everybody there should be plenty by the, by the end of the parade however i'd say if you're towards the tail end you're pretty much trying to get <laughs> lighten the load because at the end of the day it's, it's been a long walk or ride. So, Frank, speaking of the end of the day, let's go back to the beginning of the day. You look fantastic here. I know you don't have, you're all dressed up in uh, your wonderful pirate gear. And you're, the pirate gear you're wearing has a lot of history. It's a lot of hand-me-down. <laughs> uh, I've pretty much wear the same thing. But I do not wear this particular shirt at the uh, parade because getting makeup and uh, things on it. So I have a different outfit, if you will, for the parade itself, uh, different weather. I mean, last year was probably the coldest I can remember it was in freezing. My, my 54 mm -hmm. years. But yeah, and some days are going to be hot. You certainly don't wear, want to wear these, these heavy black trousers on a hot day. And so you basically adjust it to the, uh, to the weather. And then, of course, there's the makeup. Yes, I was going to ask you that because rain or shine, cold or hot, still pirates are putting their best step forward. That makeup, how long does it take you to get that makeup on? And uh, it's specialty makeup. It is. Uh, a lot of the members of the crew uh, go various places uh, that morning. Uh, to get made up by uh, professional volunteers. I learned many, many years ago how to do my own. And that's so nice, though. Professional volunteers, 
That's fantastic that people well, volunteer to put on your makeup. Yeah, they're uh, students from, I uh, know, uh, University of Tampa, University of South Florida, and others that uh, volunteer their time to, uh, to do that, and they do a really good job of it. And they have an awful lot that they have to do that morning. Well, tell us about your routine then. What do you do? Because I'm a member of a special events committee, the Grenadiers, we are in and out of costume many times during the year. Most of our events do not involve makeup, but several of them do. So I learned, goodness, probably 40 years ago, how to do my own makeup. And it's a step process. You start with a water base. You have to let that dry. Then there is a chemical called collodion, which is it's an, almost an ether product. Mm. That, that's what causes the scars. When that dries, it actually shrinks your skin. It actually shrinks it. Actually it actually causes your skin to Does shrink. Does it hurt? Which, well, it all depends on what you want hey. to say. Hurt. You, you, you really need it. You really need the scar. No pain, no gain. And when, no, you, when you're absolutely. a pirate, you've got to do, you know. It, it does pinch. <laughs> and sometimes when it comes off, it does maybe take a little skin with it. But you have the scars, and then you use grease paint, and you just get creative with uh, how you want your scars to look. So, Frank, tell us about the invasion on the water. Okay. The original parade in 1904 was on horseback. On horseback? You had about 50 members of the crew of Gasparilla that got together to start it in May of 1904. Twenty-six of them were on horses. I guess, I guess the others were either afraid of horses or didn't want anything to do it, but they started at Plant Park and paraded across the Lafayette Street Bridge and ended up at the courthouse. The water invasion didn't start until 1911, and it was done with borrowed ships. The Gasparol organization didn't have its first ship until 1937, and it was a 143-foot, three-masted schooner. It's a real so sailing vessel. Beautiful. Was that that ship lasted until 1951? It was an old schooner, and it sort of <laughs> wore itself out. That was the Jose Gasparilla, the first. Then in 1954, the present ship, Jose Gasparilla II, uh, was built. So it's 165 feet long. It's a steel construction, three masted. I say it is the only pirate ship like it in the world. Doesn't it? I mean, every time I see it, honestly, my heart skips a beat. It's one of the most beautiful sights. And if it makes my heart skip a beat, I can imagine what it does for you. It is when you have everybody on it and someone said, well, how many, how many folks are in the crew? And the, the proper answer to that is they're boatload <laughs> and they're all up in the rigging. I won't, I don't go above the deck. They're all up in the rigging. They're covered every inch of that, of that ship. Cannons, pistols, the flags flying. It is an incredible experience. I, and, and, I know, and I know you said that you love everything about Gasparilla. It's like your favorite day of the year. It's like Christmas. It Would you say that boat ride tops everything? So I, I rode the ship for over 40 years. And <laughs> the thing that makes Gasparilla the most fun is the gunfire. And the gunfire bothers me these days. <laughs> well, so sometimes, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm right with age. It. I'm right behind it on the, uh, on the Royal Barge, the Starlight. So I have pretty much a front row seat. It's just not quite as loud. But it is quite the spectacle and the, the ship used to go up the Hillsborough River and dock where the Curtis Hickson Park is now the convention center was there but it had to stop doing that when they built the crosstown isn't can't, that something can't go under the crosstown so then it started going that now you know it lands at the convention center but I remember it going to Jackson's over on Harbor Island when Harbor Island was developed but now it goes to the convention center Oh, it's a, it's a nice ride. It leaves Ballast Point at 1130 on Invasion Day, docks at the convention center at one o'clock. We get the key to the city <laughs> from good old Mayor Castor. <laughs> we get that from her right after we do that. And then the parade starts at two. And hopefully she'll just give it over. Oh, she has no choice. <laughs> she has no choice. Absolutely. There is an advance raid that we'll do. This would be the Tuesday before Gasparilla. 
If anyone is downtown around noon, there's a group of us in our special events committee, the Grenadiers, that will gather at, Gas- at Likes Park, Gaslight Park, will go in, snatch the mayor from her office, bring her to our assembled group, and demand that she surrender the key to the city to us. Or if she refuses, we've got an invasion force that's, that's coming on Saturday. Of course, she always refuses. It's one of the most beautiful parts of the story. It is. It is. <laughs> it was wonderful. An invasion by water. It is such a wonderful time. It's just absolutely great to be a pirate and be a part of Gasparilla. So it's so wonderful talking to you. And we've talked about like how many crews there are now. But you guys are the original crew. 1904. Yes, the original crew. So what is your fondest memory as you look back you know it's really hard to come up with a one single thing but still with my involvement since practically the entire time i've been in the crew so let's say 52 of the 54 years our special events committee our grenadiers we go to hospitals and probably my finest was we went to a children's cancer hospital in jacksonville and watching those particular kids, when we gave them, this was when our sponsor was the uh, Red Barons, and they had these little teddy bears that were dressed like a little Red Baron mm. uh, pilot with his leather jacket and with his little goggles on, these little, little teddy bears, and watching those kids light up that's probably the most memorable, but it happens an awful lot when we go to the hospitals today. But that one particular thing with those kids and those little red barren bears was something I will never, or very emotional. Well, you're I'll wonderful. You're wonderful Tampa celebrities. As we uh, close out this conversation, what is your bit of advice to people who plan on going to Gasparilla or enjoying Gasparilla? It is a long day. And you need to pace yourself. Um, there is a lot of adult beverages and other things. You've got to be careful. Uh, there are areas where you are not allowed to consume adult beverages pretty much off of Bayshore Boulevard, unless you're in a, uh, a private, private property or stuff like that. You cannot consume adult beverages off of the Bayshore or off of the parade route. What makes you the most proud of being a pirate? Representing the city of Tampa, representing this community, it just makes you feel so good that we have this unique experience. We have the only pirate-themed vessel in the world. To be able to put that forth and to be able to show what Tampa is to an awful lot of folks, not only that are from here, but from many countries too, that come to watch the Parade of Pirates. It just makes you so proud to be a part of what makes Tampa what it is. Well, it has been such an honor and pleasure, and we have been so proud to feature you on Unlocking Tampa Bay. Thank you so much, Frank. It has been an honor. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it.